I will read out the problem written on the board. Three identical line charges with rho L equals 10 nano coulombs per meter are placed on each of the coordinate axis of a rectangular coordinate system. Given the points A123 and B8610, find VAB due to all three line charges. Solution. For an infinite line charge, for an infinite line charge, we have, we have <coughs> electric field intensity vector E is equal to rho L divided by 2 pi epsilon rho into A rho cap and vector dl is equal to d rho into A rho cap. What unit vector E has, same unit vector, D vector dl must also have. Hence, hence VAV is equal to minus integral E dot dl from rho B to rho A equals minus integration from rho B to rho A. What is vector E? Vector E is rho L divided by 2 pi epsilon rho A rho cap dot dot D rho into A rho cap. A rho cap dot A rho cap is 1. Therefore, this becomes minus integration from rho B to rho A. Rho L divided by 2 pi epsilon D rho divided by rho. If you integrate 1 by rho, you get log rho. So, this becomes minus rho L by 2 pi epsilon natural logarithm of rho limits from rho B to rho A. So, this becomes minus rho L by 2 pi epsilon natural logarithm of rho A minus natural logarithm of rho B. So, I have written for an infinite line charge, this is the expression for electric field intensity. Vector dl is d rho into a rho cap. What unit vector e? Vector e has same unit vector length dl vector dl must have. So this is the expression for potential difference between the points a and b. So I have substituted the expression for vector e. I have substituted the expression for vector dl. A rho cap dot a rho cap is 1. Integration of 1 by rho is log rho. Then I put the limits. This implies vector E is equal to rho L divided by 2 pi epsilon minus sign and take it inside natural logarithm of rho B minus natural logarithm of rho A. Log A minus log B is log A by B. Log A minus log B is log of A by B. So we get this as rho L divided by 2 pi epsilon natural logarithm of rho B divided by rho A so many poles where where the distances where the distances rho a and rho b are measured are measured normal to normal to the infinite line charge measured normal to the infinite line charge where the distances rho a and rho b are measured normal to the infinite line charge. So this expression I will use thrice because there are three line charges. Then we will apply the principle of superposition. To find, to find this sorry this is VAB to find VAB to find VAB due to due to infinite line charge line charge on x axis So 
this is the infinite line charge. This is infinite line charge. Infinite line charge. With density, what is the density? Density rho L is equal to 10 into 10 to the power minus 9 coulombs per meter. It is kept on x axis. It is kept on x axis. Kept on x axis. Now this is point A. Point A is what? Point A is 1, 2, 3. This is point A. It is 1, 2, 3. Get, get the foot of this point. This is the this is the normal from point A on to the infinite line charge kept on x-axis. This is the infinite line charge. This is the foot of point A. This is the foot of point A. That is nothing but A dash. This is A dash. What is A dash? A dash is on x-axis y and z components are 0. Therefore, it is 1, 0, 0. This distance is rho A. Okay. Next, I will take point B. This is point B, which is 8, 6, 10. This is B dash. B dash is the foot of point B. What is it? It is nothing but 8, 0, 0. So, this is rho B. Now, rho A and rho B are calculated using distance formula. Rho A is equal to square root of 1 minus 1 whole square plus 2 minus 0 whole square plus 3 minus 0 whole square. So this is root of 13 meters. Root of 13 meters. What is rho b? Again apply distance formula. Rho b is equal to square root of 8 minus 8 whole square plus 6 minus 0 whole square plus 10 minus 0, 10 minus 0 whole square. So this is nothing but square root of 36 plus 100 is equal to root of 136 meters. Hence, VAB, hence VAB is equal to VAB, this VAB equals, apply this formula. What is rho L? Rho L is 10 into 10 to the power minus 9 divided by 2 pi epsilon is epsilon naught into epsilon r 8.54 10 to the power minus 12 epsilon r is not given therefore I take that value as 1. Natural logarithm of what is rho b? Rho b is root of 136 divided by what is rho a? Root of 13. Use calculate and simplify, you will get 211 volts. This is VAB due to infinite line charge on x axis. So please note that rho A and rho B are at right angles to x axis. That means this angle is 90 degrees, this angle also is 90 degrees. 11 volts. To find, to find VAB due to infinite line charge, due to infinite line charge on y axis. Now this is the infinite line charge, it is positively charged. What is the density of this? Rho L is equal to 10 into 10 to the power minus 9 coulombs per meter. This is now y, it is kept on y axis. It is kept on y axis. This is point A. What is point A? 1, 2, 3. This is the foot of point A. What it is? On y axis, x and z components are 0. So it is 0, this is A dash. What is A dash? 0, 2, 0. These two components are 0 because on y axis, 
x and z coordinates are 0. This, this distance is rho a. Next, I'll take point B, 8, 6, 10. This is the, this is the perpendicular, this is the, this is the normal onto the y-axis. This is the foot of point B, which is B dash equals 0, 6, 0. On y-axis again, the x component and z component are 0. This normal distance is rho b. Find rho a and rho b using distance formula. Then apply this formula to find what is vab due to infinite line charge on y-axis. So what is rho a? Rho a is equal to square root of 1 minus 0 whole square. Distance formula. x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square plus z2 minus z1 whole square under root. 2 minus 2 whole square plus 3 minus 0 whole square. So this is uh, 9, 9 plus 1, 10. This is root 10 meters. What is rho b? Rho b is equal to square root of, again apply distance formula, 8 minus 0 whole square plus 6 minus 6 whole square plus 10 minus 0 whole square. So this becomes root of 64 plus 0 plus 100 equals root of 164. Now apply this formula. Hence VAV, hence VAV is equal to what is rho L? Rho L is 10 into 10 to the power minus 9 divided by 2 pi epsilon is epsilon naught into epsilon r. Epsilon naught is 8.54 into 10 to the power minus 12. This is epsilon naught. In the absence of any data, epsilon r is taken as 1. Natural logarithm of rho b. Rho b is what? Root of 164. Divided by rho a is root of 10. If you simplify this, the answer is 251, 251.4 volts. I note down this answer over here, 251.4 volts. To find to find VAB due to infinite line charge due to infinite line charge on Z axis. This is infinite line charge with density rho L is equal to 10 into 10 to the power minus 9 coulombs per meter. It is aligned on Z axis. It is aligned on Z axis. This is point A. Point A is 1, 2, 3. This is the foot of point A, which is A dash. What is A dash? On Z axis, X and Y components are 0. Therefore, it is 0, 0, 3. This normal distance is rho A. Now, this is point B, which is 8, 6, 10. This is the foot of point B. This angle is 90 degrees. What is B dash? B dash is, what is B dash? B dash is 0, 0, 10. This normal distance is rho B. Now calculate rho A and rho B using distance formula. Rho A is equal to square root of 1 minus 0 whole square plus 2 minus 0 whole square plus 3 minus 3 whole square. So this becomes root of 1 plus 4 plus 0. That means root 5 meters. What is rho b? Root of, again apply distance formula, 8 minus 0 whole square plus 6 minus 0 whole square plus 10 minus 10 whole square. So this is root of 64 plus 36 plus 0. 
64 plus 36 is 100. Root of 100 is what? 10. 10 meters. Okay. Hence, VAB is equal to apply this formula. Rho L is 10 into 10 to the power minus 9 by 2 pi. Epsilon naught is 8.854. 10 to the power minus 12, epsilon r is 1, natural logarithm of rho b, rho b is 10, rho a is root of 5, apply, apply this formula, then use calculator, you will get the answer, 269.24 volts, please check the correctness of these answers, 269.24 volts, now we have calculated v a b, Individually due to three line charges kept on x, y and z coordinate axis. Last step. Last step. Applying. Applying. Principle of superposition. Applying principle of superposition we get. Applying principle of superposition, we get. VAB is it, we, we get the total total VAB as VAB is equal to at the individual contributions 211 plus 251.4 plus 269.24 if you add all this, you will get the answer 731 0.64 volts. This is the answer. Please check the correctness of these answers. Mostly they are correct. In case if there are any discrepancies, please tell me when you come to the college. Right? Thank you. Next problem. The electric field intensity is given as vector E is equal to x ax cap plus y ay cap plus z az cap volts per meter. Show that the electric field intensity is conservative in nature. By determining the work done to move a charge of Q coulombs around two closed paths consisting of straight line segments between the points given in part A and part B. Now I will go to the solution. First let me sketch part A. First let me do part A. This is X axis. This is Y axis. This is Z axis. This is the point 0, 0, 0. This is the point 0, 0, 2 and uh, this is the point 0, 2, 2 and this is the point 0, 2, 0. These points are joined by straight lines. Okay. This I call path C1, this I call path C2. This I call path C3 and this I call path C4. We are taking a charge of Q coulombs around this closed path. Correct? And we have to show that the work done is 0. What is the expression for path C2, path C1? Path C1 is along Z axis. Therefore, what is vector DL for path C1? DZ into AZ cap. Path C2 Path C2 is parallel to y axis. Therefore, what is the expression for vector dl? Vector dl is equal to dy into ay cap. For path C3, what is vector dl? Again, it is parallel to z axis. It is dz into az cap. For path C4, what is vector dl? It is nothing but dy into ay cap. So, I am doing part A. Part A. This is the figure corresponding to part A. The work done, work done is equal to W is equal to minus Q times contour integral C vector E dot dl. So many jobs. This implies W is equal to minus Q into this closed path is made up of four straight lines, C1, C2, C3, C4. Therefore, this closed integral, I will split it to four open integrals. Contour integral C1, vector E dot 
dl contour integral c2 vector e dot dl contour integral c3 vector e dot dl contour integral c4 vector e dot dl vector e dot dl this implies w is equal to minus q see what is vector uh, e for what is vector e vector e is x into a x cap plus y into a y cap plus z into a z cap dot what is vector dl for path c1 dz into a z cap plus contour integral c2 what is vector e again it is x into a x cap plus y into a y cap plus z into a z cap dot for path c2 what is vector dl dy into a y cap plus contour integral c3 what is vector e i am taking evaluating this integral what is vector e x into a x cap plus y into a y cap plus z into a z cap dot for path c3 what is vector dl dz into a z cap plus contour integral c4 what is vector e it is given over here x into a x cap plus y into a y cap plus z into a z cap dot what is vector dl for path c4 dy into a y cap this implies this implies w is equal to a z cap dot a z cap is 1 so minus q into contour integral c1 you get what from the first from, from, from the first integral what is the function inside the first integral it is z into dz for path c1 if you take here what is z coordinate 0 here what is z coordinate 2 therefore it is 0 to 2 then I will come to this a y cap dot a y cap is 1 a x cap dot a y cap is 0 a z cap dot a y cap is 0 so you get from the second integral y dy for path c2 this is the initial point this is the final point what is the y coordinate here 0 what is the y coordinate here 2 then I will go to this integral a z cap dot a z cap is 1 integral z dz for path c3 for path c3 this is the initial coordinate for z which is 2 and what is the final coordinate for z it is 0 so it is 2 to 0 z dz plus i will go to last integral you get what y dy for path c4 what is the x coordinate initial x coordinate sorry initial y coordinate 2 what is final y coordinate 0 so it is 2 to 0 This implies W is equal to minus Q integral 0 to 2 Z dz plus integral 0 to 0 to 2 y dy. If you change the limits of integration, minus sign will come minus integral 0 to 2 Z dz. Here also interchange the limits of integration minus 0 to 2 y dy. These two integrals cancel out, these two integrals cancel out, you get a 0 result. This implies W is equal to minus Q times contour integral C vector E dot DL is equal to 0. This implies contour integral C vector E dot DL is equal to 0. This implies vector E is conservative in nature is conservative in nature. This is the end of part A. Now I will proceed to part B.
parts B now. This is X, this is Y, this is Z. This is 0, 0, 0. This is 0, 0, 2. And this point is 2, 0, 0. These are the straight lines connecting the respective points. This is path C1. This is path C5. This is path C6. Path C1 is along Z axis. Therefore, what is vector DL here? Vector DL is DZ into AZ cap. Please note the path C1, path C5 and C6 are in XZ plane. So what is the expression for vector DL for path C5? It is DX into AX cap plus DZ into AZ cap. What is the expression for vector DL for path C6? It is vector DL is equal to DX into AX cap. Now I will proceed with part B. W is equal to minus Q times contour integral C vector E dot DL equals minus Q times this closed line integral is made up of three open integrals each for path C1, C5 and C6. So contour integral C1 vector E dot DL <coughs> contour integral sorry integral E dot DL for path C5 integral E dot DL for path or path C6. This implies W is equal to minus Q times <clears throat> what is vector E? Vector E is X into AX cap plus Y into AY cap plus Z into AZ cap dot. What is vector DL? Vector DL for path C1 is the result of this dot product z into dz contour integral along the path c5 you get what x d6 dx plus z dz coefficients of x cap you multiply coefficients of z cap you multiply and add contour integral c6 you get what here x into dx so this is nothing but minus q times contour integral c1 z dz sorry line integral c1 z dz plus c5 contour so line integral c5 x dx plus line integral c5 z dz line integral c6 x dx equals minus q times for path c1 z, z varies from 0 to 2 z dz for path c5 x varies from x varies from 0 to 2 for path c5 z varies from z varies from 2 to 0 for path c6 x varies from 2 to 0 So this is minus q integral 0 to 2 z dz plus integral 0 to 2 x dx. If you interchange limits of integral, you get a minus sign 0 to 2 z dz minus here also same thing. Integral 0 to 2 x dx becomes minus once the limits of integration are changed. These two integrals cancel out. These two integrals cancel out, you get a 0 result. This again implies W is equal to minus Q times contour integral C vector E dot DL is equal to 0. This again implies contour integral C vector E dot DL is equal to 0. The above result, the above result is applicable, applicable for any closed path.
for any closed path. I have made a very general statement for any closed path. Here, in specific, you have taken two different closed paths, and still you get the same design. This is the end of the problem. Next topic electric field is a negative gradient of the potential. That means we are developing today relationship between relationship between vector E and V. So we will proceed in this manner. Let us take streamlines of electric field intensity. These parallel lines are called streamlines of electric field intensity. These are streamlines of electric field intensity. In the midst of these streamlines, we will take a random path. This is a random path. This is a random path taken in the midst of the streamlines of electric field intensity. These are the two points A and B. Distance between A and B is DL. I am going to write now, in the presence of, in the presence of the streamlines, in the presence of streamlines of electric field intensity, consider a random path, consider a random path as shown there is a random path as shown in the figure. Take two points, take two points, points A and B having a small separation, having a small separation equal to dl. equal to dl. dl is of course a vector here written only the magnitude. Work done, work done in moving a unit positive charge, unit positive charge, unit positive charge means one coulomb charge from point A to point B is yes, dv is equal to minus in minus vector e dot dl. The negative sign implies the negative sign implies that the work is done that the work is done by an external agent that the work is done by an external agent. This I will call equation 1. So what I have done? In the presence of streamlines of electric field intensity, I have taken a random path. I have taken two points A and B having a small separation equal to dl. Work done in moving a unit positive charge from point A to point B is given by equation 1. Negative sign implies that the work is done by an external agent. Next I am going to say since V is a unique function, unique function, unique function of x, y and z, x, y and z, the total derivative, the total derivative of V, of V, Total derivative of V can be written as total derivative of V can be written as dV is equal to dou V by dou X into dx plus dou V by dou Y into dy plus dou V by dou Z into dz. This I call equation 2. Next step, next step is to find, is to find 
gradient of v dot vector dl gradient of v dot vector dl is equal what is gradient of v it's a vector dou v by dou x into a x cap plus dou v by dou y into a y cap plus dou v by dou z into a z cap dot what is vector dl it is nothing but dx into ax cap plus dy into ay cap plus dz into az cap multiply the coefficients of ax cap ay cap and az cap and add them the result is dou v by dou x into dx plus dou v by dou y into dy plus dou v by dou z into dz this is equation 3 from equations 2 and 3 we get from equations from equations 2 and 3 we find that we find that dv is equal to dv is equal to del v grad v dot vector dl this i call equation 4 equating equations 1 and 4 equating 1 and 4 gives gives minus vector e dot dl is equal to grad v dot vector dl this implies vector e is equal to minus grad v this is the relationship between electric field intensity and electric scalar potential very very important relationship expressions expressions for grad v in different coordinate systems in different coordinate systems first one cartesian one by one i write grad v is equal to dou v by dou x into ax cap plus dou v by dou y into ay cap plus dou v by dou z into a z cap this is in cartesian coordinate system gradient of v is equal to dou v by dou rho into a rho cap plus 1 by rho dou v by dou phi into a phi cap plus dou v by dou z into a z cap this is in cylindrical cylindrical coordinate system you have to remember this is the expression for gradient of v in cylindrical coordinate system this gives variation in rho direction this gives variation in phi direction this gives variation in z direction last gradient of v in spherical coordinate system dou v by dou r into a r cap plus 1 by r dou v by dou theta into a theta cap plus 1 by r sin theta dou v by dou phi into a phi cap this is the expression for gradient in a spherical coordinate system this is the expression for gradient in a spherical coordinate system we shall now do a simple problem given v is equal to x square plus y square plus z square find e at p 1 1 solution recall recall vector e is equal to minus grad e this is the relationship between electric field intensity and electric scalar potential now the problem is given in a cartesian coordinate system 
therefore this implies vector e is equal to minus dou v by dou x into a x cap plus dou v by dou y into a y cap plus dou v by dou z into a z cap minus what is dou v by dou x dou v by dou x is what 2x 2x into a x cap what is dou v by dou y 2y into a y cap what is dou v by dou z 2z 2z into a z cap unit is volts per meter hence vector e at the point p 1 1 0 is equal to minus 2 put x equal to 1 y equal to 1 z equal to 0 2 into 0 into a z cap so you get minus 2 times a x cap minus 2 times a y cap unit is volts per meter a simple problem like this could be asked in the examination. We have been given V is equal to X square plus Y square plus Z square. The question is find electric field intensity at the point 110. So remember vector is negative gradient of electric scalar potential. The problem is given in a Cartesian coordinate system. Therefore write the expression for gradient. Dou V by dou X how do you get? By differentiating this expression partially with respect to x. Like that you differentiate partially with respect to y to find dou v by dou y. Then finally differentiate partially with respect to z to get dou v by dou z. Then put x equal to 1, y equal to 1, z equal to 0 to get the electric field intensity at point P. Thank you. Next problem. This is a very simple problem. Give one v is equal to rho square phi square z square holds find vector e at the point p1 pi by 4 2 this problem is given in a cylindrical coordinate system therefore what is rho rho is 1 meter what is phi phi is pi by 4 what is z z equal to 2 meters again recall recall solution Vector E is equal to minus gradient of V. Now you have to recall this from your memory. What is the expression for gradient in a, in a cylindrical coordinate system? It is dou V by dou rho into A rho cap plus 1 by rho dou V by dou phi into A phi cap plus dou V by dou z into A z cap. So this is nothing but minus dou v by dou rho, you do it here. So phi square z square constant, when you differentiate with respect rho partially, so you get 2 times 2 times rho phi square z square into a rho cap plus 1 by rho. If you differentiate partially with respect to phi, you get rho square into 2 phi into z square into a phi cap plus dou v by dou z what you get rho square phi square into 2 z a z cap so this becomes minus 2 times rho phi square z square a rho cap plus rho gets cancelled when rho gets cancelled you get 2 times rho phi z square into a phi cap plus 2 times 2 times rho square phi square z a z cap unit is volts per meter hence hence vector e at the point p what is p 1 pi by 4 2 so in this expression substitute rho is equal to 1 phi is equal to pi by 4 and z equal to 2 so you will get three terms one for a rho cap, one for a phi cap, one for a z cap that you do at home and the unit will be volts per meter. Like this, the electric field intensity can be found from potential expression when the problem is in a cylindrical coordinate system. In the examination, you can ask the problem in a spherical coordinate system. Therefore, I advise you to remember the expression for gradient in a Cartesian coordinate system, in a cylindrical coordinate system and in a spherical coordinate system. Problem will be simple. 
but remembering the expressions plays a very crucial role. Next, I will be doing slightly higher level problems, but before you come to next class, please go through these fundamentals and then come. Thank you.